the Masters, Augusta, Georgia. That is, it almost transcends golf. And uh, joining us right now, the host of the Beyond the Clubhouse podcast, which I, I highly suggest you tune into, a guy who's been to every tournament I think ever in the world. <laughs> uh, and he, he joins us each and every year to talk about it, Garrett Johnson. Garrett, it's Dave, it's Jason. Been a while. Good morning. How are you? Jess, good morning. Always good to hear from you guys. And uh, yeah, this is a special week. I always think about like, I remember 20, uh, 2002 in the playoffs, uh, you know, when the Kings were playing, every single morning I was getting up and, and reading uh, Aileen Boison's article about game one. How did that go? What did, we, what did she think? What did Scott Howard Cooper think? Mm-hmm. I mean, every single day there's so much to read and, and get excited about and, and obviously uh, watch videos and watch this coverage, right? The pregame, the on the range, there's just so much coverage of the Masters. But for me, it almost harkens back to 20 years ago with Kings at huh. the level. So what would you say is going into a day before we get started, Garrett, the kind of the number one or top couple storylines going into this year's Masters? Yeah, that's a great question, Jason, because I think this particular Masters, obviously with Liv, the the influence of, you know, they took John Rahm, the defending champ. This is the first event uh, major coming in with a defending champion being from Liv. And his presser yesterday, I don't know if you guys saw that 20 minutes, he got peppered pretty hard. And you yeah. know what? He, he deserved it. He deserved all 400 million, 500 million uh, that they, that the repercussion that comes with that, right? And I, I love John Rahm. He, he's been very... Um, easy to chat with and and he's a pretty upfront guy but that was a big part of his presser and he had to kind of deflect some of those questions and he said that they were asked about his legacy and he said you know what i've taken a detour if you ask me about my legacy i have taken a detour not being on, on the pga tour anymore and but change can be good that's that's his opinion so it'll be interesting how he does he's the kind of fiery player that i i would bet uh I, don't tell my wife, but I, I put the house on the fact that he's going to be in the last couple groups on Sunday. He's so good. He's going to will it. Uh, we haven't seen a back-to-back champion, I think, in 20-something year, 22 years since Tiger, right? And it's so hard to do at Augusta, but but John Rahm would be the guy. I think his demeanor and his ability to, to get fired up. And Scotty Scheffler's playing so well, as you guys know. Uh, he's a couple big wins and then a, what a second he missed by one shot in his last one so i mean how hot do you need to be i i saw his press conference is all about preparation you know what i mean like for him he's done the preparation he's not worried about swing thoughts okay he he looks nervous to us when his feet are going sideways after his drives right <laughs> but he knows what he's doing technique wise with his his longtime coach randy smith he's not worried about technique what he's saying is that he's focused on on what's ahead of him and and having the right mental attitude that's all he cares about right now and i think for him he's gonna be a tough guy to beat the last one of course is tiger woods can he get it done he's well obviously can he get it done can he make the cut and break history right that's the big one and then he was also complimentary of roy mcelroy he will get it done only a matter of time to complete the grand slam that's that's the big one roy's always told me that he's got to come into this week thinking like he's a 10 year old kid again how excited would 10 year old roy be so you, you you threw out a couple names there, and I, I, I certainly don't disagree with a thing you said, but doesn't it just kind of feel like, and I read all the stuff, all the <laughs> all the stuff that the nerds read, you know, like the 18 out of the last 18 champions have had X, Y, Z, T to green, blah, blah, you know, all the stuff, and you know, all, all the breakdowns that then leave like five guys that could win it this year, if you believe all that stuff. Doesn't it seem like the pick du jour, though, is a guy that uh, has a gold medal to his name, but not much else, Xander Schauffele? Yeah. Yeah. I, he's been knocking on the door. It, it depends on how you look at pressure, right, and how he's dealt with being in position in majors before, right? Is he either a good thing or a bad thing? I think a lot of people think, oh, well, he's he put in the water on 16 and 2021 uh, against Hideki. He doesn't have it. You know, the par three, he just, just doesn't have it. Or he... He dropped the ball. He didn't get it done in the U.S. Open. He's, you know, finished top 14 in every single U.S. Open, the hardest golf tournament in the world. And I asked him why he's able to do that at Bay Hill a month ago. And he said, course, uh, just playing with what the course gives you. He doesn't, he's not trying to get too greedy on harder weeks like that. But at the Masters, though, how many people can get themselves into the final group the way he did with Hideki in 2021? It's so easy to say, oh, he didn't get it done. Hideki beat him. Hideki's a world-class iron player. Hideki's an, an unbelievable chipper around the greens at Augusta National. It's hard to beat Hideki Matsuyama. You got to bring your A game. 
And the fact that Xander was able to make it a game uh, says a lot about him. It's just so easy to knock the guy. But um, in terms of how hungry he is for a major, I asked him that recently, and he said that he's put together the best preparation he can. And he's got his dad as a big part of his swing coach. And he's brought on uh, recently Chris Como. As you guys know, Chris Como's worked with Tiger Woods in the past and Bryson DeChambeau. He said he's doing everything he can preparation-wise, mentally and physically. And and he wants to get the most out of it. Uh, he, he wants to have no uh, – he wants to have peace of mind, basically, when, when, when it's all said and done. And he feels confident with what he has right now. Hey, Players' Championship, the very last big event, what did he do? He had a putt on 17 to tie for the lead. He missed by one uh, for a play. Off. I mean, come on, this guy is putting him in a position. It's so easy to overlook the hard stuff that took him to get there. It's 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 impressive. So I think you bringing him up, Dave, is, is a fair point. Xander's ready. Garrett, is there someone else maybe that's people aren't talking about this week? Someone or a couple that are on your radar like, hey, if everything went right this week, I wouldn't be surprised if they're making some noise on Sunday. That's that's a really good point. I think Will Zalatoris, you guys remember that same mm-hmm. year, right? Uh, you know, I'm going back a couple years, but 2021 masters, he was right there and he finished second. Okay. And, and he, he's got a couple of top fives in the masters in what three starts, four mm-hmm. starts. Like yep. it, it's not that easy. This is still a young kid. I was like 26 or something, 27 big time giants fan. He loves uh, obviously crook and Kipe and those guys, so Dave Fleming, but no, I talked with him a month ago and I said, how are you feeling about your career? Do you have any regrets about your close calls? He says, at this point, no regrets at all. But I'll tell you this, if you walk into my house and you see those silver, uh, all those silver medals or the silver, uh, what do you call those, uh, trophies that yeah. show, that fires me up and my coach, Josh Gregory, that we need to get it done. It, enough's enough. And uh, the the goal for my career and my life is what he says is to win a major championship. And I I'm so ready for it. And if you see his game, like he's been playing pretty well recently here in the spring guys. And I know he was injured and I asked him, how was your injury coming back in January? And he said that uh, gratitude was the biggest thing he learned about himself. Hey guy in your prime nine months on the, on the bench, like what kind of perspective does that show from, from his maturity? Right. So think about, Getting it, getting him in the mix on Sunday, I think that maturity is going to go a long way. We're out of time, but I got to ask you the most important question. I'm going to ask you. <laughs> you know, every year uh, I enter the lottery. Every year, I think 18 straight years now, I've been turned down. I told Jason, I said, I'm just, I think I'm just going to bite the bullet and pay the insane price, save money, wash some cars, and go next year. And then it occurred to me, I'm like, well, hold on a second. I've been in this business a long time. I'm wondering, and I want you to, and some of this might be off air, but how hard is it to get a press credential? Yeah, that's a great question. I think that you're, you're thinking the right way. I I know that when I started off pursuing golf 2011, Scott Howard Cooper has been a mentor of mine, as you guys know. Yeah, Uh, love scoop. Oh, great guy. And he always said, grow with the rookies. If you want to get anywhere in golf, I don't, Garrett, I'm not a golf journalist, but you got to grow with the rookies. And what that meant was to me, hometown papers figure out the local angles so you see the peter malnati's this week who are making their debuts right he's from newcastle indiana grayson murray from a small town in north carolina the masters respects uh, a credential for those hometown regions does that make sense so yeah. I, I hey you talk about car wash uh, carmichael dave we got to do some car washes whatever it is locally but you got to fire up the troops in sacramento Find the next cam champ, okay? You got to have them, have them on, and make sure that, that that's your way to get into the Masters because you got to get that local angle with Sacramento. Well, good. When we get off the air, would you? I, I, I actually hunted around the site. I don't even know where to apply for a press credential. <laughs> I, left, I didn't even find like the apply here thing. I feel like you have to. Kn- Do you want Garrett to fill it out for you? I just want to know, like, is there a secret handshake to even apply for a press credential? And are you allowed to attach like four pages begging? Cause I'll do it. I'm not afraid to beg. I ain't too. I ain't, I ain't too, too proud, proud to beg, beg Garrett. That's all I'm saying. So. Hey, to be honest with you, I, I've written letters to Augusta and had my editors uh, send that in their name. Like, hey, here's the angle. This is why it's a great story. Right. Signed by the publisher. Signed by the editor. And and they loved it. Now sometimes the masters has pushed back and said, hey, you want to go and cover Jason Day and Adam Scott mm, for Inside Golf Australia? You know what? No, I, don't focus on that. We will actually let you come if you cover the Asian Pacific Amateur Champion, Anthony Murdaka. 
And I, I'm like, oh, yeah, okay, so that a yes? Okay, it's a yes. So sometimes they want to make sure that you're um, – Focus on what they like too. So hey, just just be able to roll with it is what I'm saying. Dude, I will cover Find the color angle. of the azaleas. I would cover <laughs> Robert Ori if he made it into the Masters <laughs> and write puff pieces on him if yeah. that's what it took. Garrett, uh, everybody check out Garrett's podcast. It's fantastic if you're a fan of golf beyond the Clubhouse podcast. You can find that on all the mediums there are. We'll check back in with you uh, next week throughout the tournament, and uh, hopefully uh, hopefully we have a lot of fun, and hopefully that par three contest goes well today. I'm looking forward to it at noon. Best day in golf, guys. Wednesday at the Masters. Y'all, Jack Nicholas, all the greats. And the part. See you, brother. Take care. Thanks, Thanks for joining us. That's uh, it's Garrett Johnson from uh, Beyond the Clubhouse yeah. podcast. Always fun to talk to him. Always fun to talk to Ryan. If Ryan <laughs> has the answer to what is the 